was a, a Saturday kind of like this, and Father Lini out of St. Teresa's tells a story that the Catholics were in church on this Saturday for a funeral of a guy who had been in the parish for quite some time to show their respect. And it was actually terribly hot inside the church, so they had the windows open. And beside the church, there was an auction going on. And so they could equally hear the voice of the auctioneer, just like they could that of the priest. Well, it came to the end of the funeral, and the priest gives the parting words, Lord, now you may let your servant go in peace. And the people heard through the windows, going once, going twice. We are pilgrims. You know, one of my worst memories is when my parents finally sold their house. We were in their house for, I grew up there, over 30 years I've been in that house. And so part of the reason it was such a bad memory was, you know, that's a part of it. You grow with a house, it becomes a part of the family. And it's really hard to leave that. The other part was the obscene amount of clutter. It was terrible. In fact, we had debated at times whether or not to just simply back a dumpster right up to the house and take everything out and just pour it in and start all over. In fact, the day we, we began packing and moving, I looked my mother straight in the eye. I won't tell her I said this. But I looked her straight in the eye and I said, you need to go to confession. <laughs> this is terrible. It really is terrible. Now, in all fairness to them, in my former life I was a scientist and I had a business where I put together animal skeletons for museums and zoos across the country. So if you go to some of these places, you'll see my work there. However, when I entered the seminary, I still had a large chest freezer at their home filled with animal bodies. Guess where that is? Still in their home. Because you never know, you know, when you might need one of them. Isn't that what happens? We don't throw anything away because you know what will happen? The moment you do, then you go looking for it. You actually find a use for it. You kept it around for 25 years. You never found a use. The day you throw it away, it's finally usable, and now it's gone. We are collectors of artifacts. We really are. And I believe we're collectors of artifacts because we forget that we are pilgrims. We are on a journey. We really are. The ancients understood this because they were nomads. They'd put up a tent one day, they'd tear it down the next day and move the herds. They had to go wherever the water was, wherever the food was. And so this meant a few things to them. First of all, it meant whatever you take with you, you've got to carry it. So you decide whether you want to carry that thing or not. You know that moose head that's been around for years and years? Decide whether you want to carry that with you or not. But it also meant something else. It meant when they encountered things, they had to decide what was most important, what they really should keep, what they really did need. And even if it was a trinket that was simply sentimental and didn't have any use, that they had to decide whether they would use it or not. Growing up with Amish people in Strasbourg, I've learned many lessons from them. One of the lessons I learned was everything in their home had a purpose. And the purpose was never simply decoration. That even if they had a tapestry on the wall, it was a blanket. It could be used as a blanket. Even though they had these little fabrics on the wall, they were pot holders or whatever else. Everything had a purpose. It was a life of simplicity for that reason because they too believe that they are pilgrims on a journey. We are all pilgrims on a journey. And so it's a good time to take a, a look at our lives in the physical sense. In other words, what kind of clutter do we have in my house? Because let me tell you this right now on a personal note, the worst thing you can do to your poor children or grandchildren is to part this world suddenly and leave all that clutter for them to sort through. 
It's a good time for thinning out things. And so on a very practical level, what is the stuff that we have hoarded and collected over the years that really is useless? On a metaphorical level, or even a spiritual level, what is the clutter that we have collected over the years that we are holding on to? What is the clutter? Because this weekend, in a very special way, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. The brethren devoted themselves to the apostles' instruction in the communal life. A reverent fear overtook them all, many wonders and signs were performed. Those who believed shared all things in common. They would sell their property and goods, dividing everything on the basis of each one's need. They realized they were pilgrims. They realized that everything was gift. Now, God did not ask the apostles to give up everything. But he asked them to give up the same thing that he asks us to surrender as well. Those things that stand between us and Him. Those things that stand between us and our relationship with Him. And so on this Divine Mercy Sunday, as if, it, as if it wasn't enough that He suffered and died for us and rose from the dead, He extends to us a Divine Mercy that if we really want to change, if we really want to finally take the clutter and drop it behind, that he will accept us as a new child of God. Show me a human who will do that. And our God offers that to us. Our celebration of Easter is about a celebration of new life. But how can we possibly expect to live this new life if we refuse to leave behind 